Hi there arty aliens and welcome back to Drawing Self with me Paul Yateman. You here? Welcome and whack on the subscribe button now. Coming back for more? Hi again. Today I will show you how I turned a skull into a zombie. The sketch is done initially in grey lead and I finished it in Derwent's to give it just a hint of colour. I am also playing around with an old phone to use as an alternate angle b-roll. Curiously, I see little difference in the 45 degree oblique angle video which the phone was set up at. That's odd. Anyway, to draw the skull I start with a circle for the brain case and a wedge for the jaw. As usual, despite drawing skulls over and over and over, I am still leaving the dome too small and the jaw too large. The skull too skinny and the jaw too long. At least I know where I need improvement. With the skull, the main aim is to make the cheekbones as wide as the dome of the skull and to have from the midpoint of the eyes up to be dome only. Despite aiming to leave an eye socket with the space between the eyes, I failed. The lower half of the skull I divide into three sections. These encompass the bottom of the nose cavity, or at least how far it goes down, the central line of the teeth and the bottom of the lower jaw. This particular skull was about fifth for the day and I drew 19 in total. After my 19th skull I came back to this one and did the opposite of defacing it. I also gave the front bit of the skull that contains the teeth a bit of wacky proportion. I'd identified yesterday that I make my teeth too small so I worked on making them huge and that actually came out okay. I tried multiple times to give the skull dome the correct shape and it is these scratchy lines that later inform my placement of hair. So you can see as I'm drawing the skull, I am putting into what I've learnt in the last month into practice. So there's a sharp line along the jaw, there's a couple of, uh, I guess they're in innovation points in the skull, or maybe the muscle attachment point, the, the um, six little dots you can see in various spots. Uh, the eyes are sort of ovals, but they're on a slight slant, and they're supposed to be uh, the distance of one eye socket in between each of the eye sockets which I think I'm still making them a bit too wonky. Uh, I have discovered that the cheek is supposed to go out as far as the dome of the skull. So at least that's something. Although I am still finding it difficult with the jaw. To me it looks like the lower jaw is too small and it's still too cheeky. So, getting back to the zombie bit, I decided to play around with the skull and I added some wispy hair as the lines were already there and calling out for it. I then added extra shadows around the teeth and I darkened the underside lines, so perhaps this is lit from the top. And to produce the eyes, I grabbed an eraser and removed a little bit of the eye socket and I then added two circles to each, pretty much clearing up the, the erased lines. So I had one white circle and then I just drew a, a circular black one which left the central bit non-darkened for, I guess, the highlight of the eye. And amazingly, I think that that was the most effective part of the drawing. That was only about 10 or 20 seconds of work for I think what was pretty effective, as in convincing eyeballs. I then added some extra bones in the form of the clavicle and the sternum and that was about that for the sketch. So I was fixing up the teeth, adding a bit more shading, trying to make it obvious that they're in sockets and then a little bit of shading with the grey lead just to give it a little bit of, um, I guess, interest. And then once this is done, I am going to grab some pencils and have a play with them.
but yeah, I'll do that after I spruce up the bones a little bit. I'm just fixing up the spine and then I'm going to add in the sternum here. Very much implied, do the clavicle, pretty scratchy, but using a little bit of what I've learnt during last month with anatomy. And from there, it will probably be colour time. Now for those of you who are interested, what I do is when I record these videos, I then play them back and work out uh, what I'm going to say over the top. Um, I guess for these longer videos, I could either talk over the top like I am now, or I could just shut my gob and just let you listen to whatever background music is playing until I get to the next uh, bit, which in this case is colouring in. So I did this because I wanted the image to stand out from the rest of the page. So the colours I added uh, from my Dermot uh, collection were some light scratchy additions of green, brown, grey and red. The browns and greens were supposed to imply decay, the reds, excuse me, may be left over blood and the grey was for some shadow variations. And my cat tried to help at this point. Bad kitty kitty! And finally I finish up with some grey just to flesh out the shadows a bit more and I add some more red like around the eyeballs and so much. And from there, I will call things job done. Right, so here's the final image scanned in. I think the zombie style skull worked lots better than the skull au naturel. What do you think? I am a little amazed at how effective erasing the eye socket and adding the eye was, so that was a win. Anywho, if you found this interesting, informative, entertaining, you got some sketchbook ideas, etc. Subscribe, like and share with everybody! Until next time, you have been watching Drawing Stuff with me, Paul Yateman. Take care and kapow!